Welcome back to our ECMED TV studios. We've had a number of illustrious guests joining us here for a panel discussion, for a chat, to give us information about what they're doing at Congress this year as well. And today's guest is really no exception to this illustrious panel. Her name is Professor Michal Paul. She's the chair of the SG Study Group on the Executive Committee, and she's from the Rambam Healthcare Center, the Division of Infectious Diseases, all the way from Israel. Nice to have you with us in the studio. Thank you very much for the invitation. You're very welcome. You've had a busy day already today, haven't you? You've been presenting papers. Uh, you had a nice turnout in the hall that you were in. Yes, yes. I was very pleased to see that many, many people uh, flooded the hall and, uh, and to, to all the sessions, the parallel sessions, there were so many parallel sessions and all seemed full. Talking about what makes for a good paper in this industry and also uh, submitting grants, I understand, is your, your chosen topic that you spoke about today. So let me ask you that direct question. What makes for submitting a good paper? Well, it's complicated. It was a long lecture. It's difficult to summarize it in two minutes. Um, I'm um, uh, the associate, associate chief, chief editor of CMI Eskmeed's journal. Yes. We're getting more and more papers. Each year we're, get, we're getting many, many more papers. The rejection rate is now up to 83% in the journal. So 17% acceptance. Yeah. Wow. Uh, we're getting more and more papers from all over the world, from Asia, from parts where, where uh, the lit literature was, was poorly published before, and papers are being accepted. Um, the quality of studies is improving. We're getting larger databases, larger multi-center studies. This does for a good paper. This is impressive. Nowadays, when we receive a paper from a single center, we were less fa favorable towards publication because we have such a variety, because we can choose from so, so much better. So we might say you're spoiled for choice. Yeah, we're becoming more and more spoiled. Um, C CMI is seeing more and more papers, better, better papers, accepting less and less, improving in quality so. And, um, and it's becoming more difficult for the authors. I recommend it very, very strongly to adhere to reporting recommendations. There's the Equator Net where you can get recommendations for how to write your paper for each study design. You go to, to, the, you go to the Equator site, you choose your study design, and you design your paper very, very uh, uh, much adhering to, to the reporting recommendations. So find a template that works, stick to that format, and then be truthful, accurate, and deliver everything against that. Exactly. And then interesting as well. How do you make your paper interesting? Well, one thing is to be truthful, to tell people why you did your study. You have a reason usually. For us clinicians, it usually comes up from the clinic. It's a clinical question. I've met a patient in my hospital. A question was raised, so we designed this study. This, this brings up a, a good paper because it's based on a clinical problem. Of course, it's very, very important to do a good literature review before you, you start your study and before you try to publish it because you have to put your study in, in, in the, the, the complete picture of what's happening in the literature. It's not a standalone study. You have to put it in, 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 in light of the evidence that already exists. It makes a better impression if you review the literature and tell me why you did your study and what your study adds to the available literature. We're seeing an awful lot of papers being submitted, as you say, with that incredibly high rejection rate. And yet when you look at ECMID now, when you look at the online facilities that are available, not just here at Congress, but throughout the entire year from an ECMID point of view, I mean, it really is a remarkable choice that's out there. Um, storytelling, as you've mentioned, although it's got to be true, I mean, storytelling in the best sense, is that the heart of a good paper? If you can find a story that you've got that enhances the existing materials that are out there in and around you, is it a small angle, but a storytelling angle? Is that important to you? Uh, it's important. It's important, yeah. It doesn't replace a good study. Um, 
when I receive a very good study, I'll, I'll do my best to help the authors tell their story ah. uh, better. <clears throat> uh, if I get a so-and-so study and the story is told poorly, I won't go into the effort of improving the story. I'll just tell the authors, go somewhere else. Your story is poorly told and the study is not so, so. So what so, makes for a good study then? Well, a good study is uh, designed in advance. It has a protocol. Um, it, there's a reason, there's a clinical reason to do the study. There is a power <laughs> calculation. There is a certain, you have to address the sample size before you do the study. You have to decide if you can do the study, if you can recruit enough patients. Is there a minimum you, standard size below which you would not consider a paper? There are methods to calculate what is the sample size needed. Uh, there, there, there are methods for all types of studies and, and at least, you, you, yeah, you just simply have to do a power calculation b beforehand uh, to, 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 to you realize... You mentioned Equatonet earlier though, where would you go for a, a, a similar resource that might give you an indication of appropriate study sizes in the field in which well, you're Well, nowadays writing. with Google, it's very, very simple. You just ask Google, I want to do this study. Give me the sample size for the study. You'll, you'll go into wonderful sites that will tell you that. And it's really as easy as that? As easy as that, yeah. The failure rate of people who are getting their papers rejected, have they missed just this basic advice? And was your presentation about unashamedly going back to basics then? Many of the studies re are rejected because of small sample size. Many, I simply write one sentence, your sample size is not appropriate to, to analyze risk factors for so and so, or not to, to, to examine this, this intervention. That's one big reason for, for rejection, that's true. People should go to, toward, move towards multi-center study, towards involving collaborators. And, and th this is the importance of ECMID, I think. This is the place to network with people. This is the place to meet people, to form relationships with, uh, with other people, and, and to enlarge your, uh, enlarge your, your capabilities of doing uh, good studies. I think many of the guests who've sat with us at ECMA TV here in the studio have been saying much the same thing, that the networking element of a congress of this nature is almost equally as important as the actual events that are going on in and around the four days that were gathered here in Copenhagen this year. Would you agree with that? Very, very much, because nowadays when publications happen so fast, when, when, when evidence is available out there as soon as a study is completed, uh, the, the, uh, the conferences become less and less important to, to hear new findings. They're there to meet people, to talk with a person, to understand better with a person and to network. So when you travel back to Israel after this ECMED here in Copenhagen, what will have made it a successful Congress worth spending your time on in your mind? When you walk out of the door for the last time on Tuesday evening and go, that was good because... Well, in lectures, I, I, there are very, very few I, uh, topics where I'd like to hear something completely new. A recently completed study that is first published here. This is big news that I'll bring, bring back. Another piece of news is a study that we already know of. It was published, we read it, but I heard from the speaker, from the, the researcher, um, a, an opinion on, on the study or a, another angle to the study or why an explanation of the results or just a personal experience on, on the topic that, that I have not heard before. This I'll bring back. And of course the network. So of course the people that I've met in the context that I've formed and all the emails I'll get after the, the Congress and have to de deal with. With, with all this, your new uh, friends, yeah, yeah, which is a yeah, fantastic yeah. thing. You also mentioned, Professor, submitting grants and you spoke about that today as well. Um, I know it's hard to, to condense an entire presentation into a couple of moments. What do I need to know about submitting grants? What do our delegates need to take away from your presentation? Um, this presentation was, was, was um, uh, the speaker was uh, Professor Matthew Falagas that was in our session. He gave an excellent talk <coughs> and recommendations on how to submit grants. First, you have to know that your chances are really low. Yes. <laughs> Opportunities are... It's are, easier uh, to get published than it is to get a grant, and it's yeah, pretty hard to get yeah, published. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, one, one important tip I, th I think that Professor Falagas gave is that you have to read very carefully the grant call because many people will submit their research, they like their research, they submit it as is, and they don't adhere to the call, uh, to the call details. They have to adhere very strictly to what the call wants. The people that publish the calls, they want exactly the type of studies that they're, they're advertising. And, uh, and, and I think that's a very important tip to follow. Excellent, thank you. Now, wrapping this up, if we may, time is tight and always against us. Um, in terms of this Congress, you've seen the changes in ECMID over the last few years. Um, how does this Congress in Copenhagen stack up for you? It's growing bigger and bigger. It's growing larger and larger. You have to really jog between, uh, between lectures. Uh, I think it's growing more and more interesting. I think the topics are more oriented towards us, towards clinicians, towards microbiologists. There's a direction towards our, 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 our desk, and, and I find that very exciting. And technological innovations, lots of posters, lots of e-posters, lots of e-learnings. We had a virtual uh, webcast with China earlier this morning as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, the technology is also shaping the Congress that we know and love as ECMED. It's just growing into some really fantastic yeah. unusual things. Yeah, the fact that you can find all the lectures on the ESCMID website afterwards is very, very hel helpful. Sometimes I, I, I use the presentations, I use the, the, the abstracts, I use the complete presentations to grab data after the conference because you, you cannot hear everything. I think that's, yeah, yeah. The, the, so what you're really saying to me is that ECMID is unmissable as far as you're concerned, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> the ultimate standard in terms of your profession and your industry. I think so. I think so. A yearly, yeah. We're going to see you in Istanbul next year? Of course, especially that it's Istanbul. <laughs> Excellent. In your home language, could you um, invite delegates, please, to Istanbul next year? What would you say to them to tell them to come to Istanbul? I hope they will come to us and see us in Istanbul in the next And you can't say it better than that. Professor, thank you so much. It's been a thank real you, pleasure having you on the, on the program. And good luck with the rest of your Congress. I hope you enjoy it all. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you.